one of you a Merry Christmas. This is the month of Christmas, the month of peace. The month we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I wish you wherever you are to celebrate in peace and give things to those who are in need. Amen? Bless you all. It's about uh, sincerity and consistency. That's the topic. Sincerity and consistency in the principle of the kingdom are keys to the blessing. Can I repeat that? Sincerity and consistency to the principles of God's kingdom are keys to his blessing. Let's go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 15. Hallelujah. Romans 15. If you are not sincere to God after this war, after this topic, I believe that you are going to be sincere to God, to yourself, and to people around you. Amen. Romans 15, verse 4 says, For whatsoever things we are written aforetime, we are written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The Bible is saying here that whatever that is written here is an example for us. In this new covenant so that true when we see the things out that are written here we can have confidence we can have hope that if we do exactly what people did here god who is not the respect of any man we definitely do what he did for them to us because god never changed amen in first samuel chapter 16 verse 7 the bible says that god looks at the heart and not at our physical being that is why sincerity is very, very important. Amen? You see, people might look at you physically, you look beautiful, you look handsome. But God does not look at us from our outer appearance. He looks at us from inside. When Samuel was sent to the family of Jesse to go and anoint the next king, Samuel, the prophet of God, was looking at the beauty, the handsomeness of the brothers of David. And wanted to annoy the wrong person and God said no that is not the one I sent you to annoy for you are looking at him physically but I God look at the heart of men and it is only our heart that we dictate whether we are sincere or not I have seen people within these few years of my pastorate ministry that if you counsel people and they tell you something else but what is troubling them is totally different which means they are not sincere and that is the reason at times we pray and pray thinking that it is witchcraft. It is this, but it's not witchcraft because only a sincere heart can receive blessing from the Lord. We can lie to men, we can lie to people, but one person you cannot lie to is God because he knows the state of your heart. Since so sincerity is of the heart and your heart is the real you, every action that takes place in you or in the physical realm is first conceived inside our heart. That is it. There is no action that is initiated from the outer part of our lives. Every action started from inside. We conceive this inside, we plan it, and the body just follows. That is why God does not look at the body, but God looks at the inner man according to the Bible. If you look at the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 5, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 says, God was talking to Noah. The time God regretted ever created man. And he said that he looks at the imagination of man and all is wickedness. That is what you see in our days. And that is what you see these days in the church. That you don't even know the heart of your brother. You don't know the heart of your sister. They can smile with you, laugh with you, but in their heart, something different. But the only person that can know that is God. And that is why you see people struggling. Because God is not the respect of any man. He rewards you according to the state of your heart. I was telling people yesterday, and I have been saying that, that the stage you are as a Christian depends on the state of your heart. And if you are going to move up, the state of your heart must be changed. So it is not, and, and I believe strongly with my heart, that if the state of our heart is clean, there is nothing a wish can do. You know why? Because God said, even in his presence, the presence of the wicked, he will bless you. So most of the time, it is not that it's we. 
And that is why this topic is coming to you and me. Let's go to the book of Proverbs to show you the importance of the heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4, 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Whatever that is in the heart, spread to all parts of the body, spreads to your life, spreads to your destiny. Our heart is the source of all our being. That is why we should mind what goes in there. That is why we should be sincere there. I was teaching um, some topics for the, for the past two weeks. And a brother came to me after teaching. He said, you are teaching, touched me. I say, yes, go and do what I say. Or what the word of God said that I've taught you. So he came back to me and said, look, I have made up my mind to be sincere and to be truthful to God. That whatever scent that goes into my hand, I'm going to tie it. Because I'm tired of struggling and I'm tired of bringing something I thought is my time, but it does not work in my life. But I hear you teaching now, and I see that I've been making mistakes. i got to be sincere with God. I say, yes, whatever I teach is what I do, and that is why you see our life the way it is today. Because I believe strongly that the word of God works. So what happened? He went back home, called his wife, and they made up their mind to be sincere to God from their heart. You see, they have been playing sincerity before the pastor and before the church, but God knew that they were not sincere. But when they had the word of God, they decided to be sincere. What happened? Within one week, two miracles that couldn't have taken place, financial miracles, that is not possible in their life, took place, both him and his wife. And he called me, he said, this still works. I said, yes, it works. The reason you see most Christians are not blessed is because they are not sincere from their heart to God. They do things the way they want to do it, but they forgot in that the word of God cannot be changed. You can't remove even a dog from it. When you remove it, it is no longer the word of God. That is why people must be very careful that their heart should be exactly what the word of God said. If not, it is not of God. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 13, let's go there. Matthew 12, 13, that out of the heart come up evil things and also good things. Let's read it. Say, good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. See, this totally explains what I was talking about. That whatever happens comes from inside. People that are jealous today, you might not know that they are jealous, but they have been conceding that. Oh, I told one of my sisters, Minister Sherry, that's me, she's online now. We're just joking. And I say, you make me jealous. But I'm just joking. But I want to say something. Jealousy is a very bad thing. It is like a canker one. And there are a lot of Christians that are jealous of their brothers and their sisters. And they forgot that God is seeing them. You see, they bring their offerings, they bring their tithe, they do everything, they sing, they worship. And they wonder every day, why are things not working fine for me? Let me show you the reason. Go to Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Hallelujah. Psalm 24. To show you the reason. That no matter what you do, if the state of your heart is not in order, all you are doing is faith before God. What I mean by faith is nonsense. It's not going to work. It's not real. Psalm 24. Verse 3 to 5. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Who? The person that has a clean heart. It is the person that goes to church every day. It is, I'm not saying don't go to church every day. It is required. It's, it's a commandment to go to church. It's only some foolish people trying to talk, talk people out of church. But Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. 
And he said in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25 to 26, that you should not forsake the gatherings of the brethren. And some people that have gone out of the way of faith is now telling people that they shouldn't go to church, that they are church. But Jesus said, I will be my, yeah, we are the church, but yet Jesus worshiped in a place. He is God, but yet he went to the upper room. He is God, but yet he went to the temple. So I don't know where they got such doctrine that you can stay at your home. You are not church. And I see many people talk bad about church, and Jesus said, my church is a church that will not wrinkle. So I don't care what you say about the church, you are going to see the church glorified. And you might be outside of it, but the church will be glorified. Whether we like it or not, because God said so. Amen? So it is not people that go to church or people that don't go to church. The people that are blessed are people with Christ, because that connects you to the blessing first. If you have Christ in you. And then the state of your heart is clean. When that happens in your life, I tell you the truth, whatever you do, it shall prosper. Let me get it. Yeah, a little bit better. Amen? Bless you all. You see, in Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 15, we can read that and see the reason why the devil was cast out. He was cast out because of the state of his heart. The state of his heart went wrong, and God said, you can't be around me any longer. And that is what the devil is trying to do to people in the church. He tried to corrupt their heart because he knows that when our heart is corrupted, everything we do in life before God won't work. Let he that have ear hear, hear what the word of God is saying. Isaiah 14 verse 12, he said, How are thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are thou cut down to the ground with the death with wicked the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You see the reason why he was cast out? Because of the state of his heart. And this is what I tell people. Mind the state of your heart. Because the state of your heart will hinder your blessing. The state of your heart will hinder your prayer. God does not answer prayer of people that are full of iniquity in their heart. Let's go for that. Proverbs 17, 20. To show you that a heart that is full of iniquity it can never be blessed. It doesn't matter what you do. Proverbs 17. Verse 20. He that had a forward heart findeth no good. Say, he that had a forward heart findeth no good. So I don't care how much you sing. I don't even care how much people preach. If the state of your heart is not in order, you will never see the benefit of the scripture. That is why those people are jealous. I was writing to a brother in the internet right now and I was talking, writing nonsense in my, in my profile. The state of his heart is corrupt. When he sees people that God is blessing, he becomes jealous of it. But you got to deal with your heart and say, God, show me the way. Because it is written, God's plan on earth is to glorify his children through, to glorify himself through his children on earth. And how does he do that? He gave example from Abraham. He blessed Abraham. He caused Abraham to be very rich. When God created Adam, he made him to be rich. When he met Noah, he made him to be rich. When he met Abraham, he made him to be rich. Our generation is not going to be different. And because some people have not gotten that key, the key of cleaning up the heart, the key of loving your brother as yourself, and obeying the principle of the word of God, that the hands of God can rest upon you, and your life will shine. They don't want to do that. But when they see people that are doing that, that is the time they would say, oh, you have made church to become business. In short, Jesus said, God, uh, the Father's business. So they are quoting the word of God. You have made church to become this. You have made church to become this. Can you imagine someone writing and under my own book, this book you are seeing living successfully, that you know, church is not a place to sell something. Can you imagine that? It is the state of his heart. Himself is struggling there because he doesn't want to obey the word of God. We have met him here, my wife sat him and blessed him with money and telling him, you know why we are blessing him with money? To teach you how to 
walk in the principle of the principle of God, of the God's kingdom, and finance will come. He will not do that. But when he see people that are doing that are blessed, that is the time he's going to know that church is not a place to make money. God gave wisdom to his people from generation to generation. And when they use that wisdom to serve the world, they are blessed. So don't listen to those people that are fake. Change your heart. Talk to yourself and say, I want to change. Because my God is a God of blessing. God is not a God of cost. God is not a God that wants his children to be begging why his street is made of gold. How many fathers will be a millionaire and want his children to be vagabond on the street? That is what those people does not understand. And I hope they can read the word of God and know the truth of the word of God. Change the state of your heart. Because a forward heart can never be blessed. In the book of Proverbs 28 verse 25, it is also said that let him join hand to hand. Pray for someone with a forward heart. He can never be blessed. Why? The state of his heart. My question to you that is watching today, wherever you are watching this program, whether from India, Pakistan, from state, from Caribbean here, from Nigeria, my question to you today from Europe is what is the state of your heart today? Because the level you will grow in Christianity depends on the state of your heart. You can be stubborn about that, but that is the truth. If you are not sincere to God, God will bless you according to the state of your heart. Amen? Let's go for that. A sincere heart is not a sinless person, but a person that is open to the Lord, even with his or her own sin. Because at times when you hear this kind of topic, a sincere heart, you think that when someone is sincere, he is not a sinner. Who said so? There is nobody on earth that is not a sinner. Nobody is perfect. But a sincere heart will tell God, I have sinned against you. But a religious person will tell God, you know, I have obeyed you, I have paid my time, I have done this, I am doing a lot of things for you, and you have not done anything for me. Look at pride in such heart. That was what happened when Jesus went to the temple. And in the temple, he saw the Pharisees said, Oh Lord, I thank you so much because I know I pay my tithe every week. I come to service and I pray three times a day. And the other one by the side said, Lord, forgive me, for I know I'm a sinner, but have mercy upon me. And Jesus said, that one was forgiven. But the proud one that called himself a religious person cannot be forgiven. Why? The state of his heart. So a sinless person does not mean that a, 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 a sincere heart does not mean that you are sinless. I give an example with the life of Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 11, let's go there. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 5. 1 Kings 11. Hallelujah. 1 Kings 11, 5. For Solomon went after Astoret, the goddess of Zedinians, and after Milcom, the abominations of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Okay, let's stop here. Remember that in the beginning of Solomon's life, the Bible says that Solomon loved the Lord. And even Solomon offered a thousand bullock instead of two. And God, because he saw the state of Solomon's heart, blessed him enormously. And also warned him that if he continued like this, his blessing will not stop. What happened? In the middle of his life, he turned his heart against God. And that is what you see at times in the church. You see some people doing things very good, loving God at the beginning of their life. My prayer for such people is to continue. Because the mistake we make is that we start to look at them, we don't even know that their heart is changed, and we are still looking at them the way we saw them. And at times you wonder, but this sister, this brother, son, God, why are things difficult for him? Not knowing that in between his heart or her heart has changed. And God, who rewards the state of her heart, is rewarding him or her according to the level of the cleanliness of his heart. But because we do not see we try at times to blame God. We try at times to do it by faith. We try at times to fast on behalf of those people and say, God, why don't you bless this person? But God says, you don't know anything. I see the state of his or her heart. I pray for you that the state of your heart be clean today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you look at the life of Solomon and the life of David naturally, who would you think 
that is sinless. Apart from the father, Solomon went after other gods. Look at his life. Look at the father's life. David is a man, was a man who committed adultery in order to cover it. Kill the man, the husband of the woman, took the woman, got married to her. And yet God said, David is a man after my heart. If you read in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 to 13, in this story, you find out that David, who had the highest authority in Israel and Judah then, when Nathan came to him and told him the story according to the revelation from God on what he did to, to, to Beersheba, the moment David, Nathan told David that you are the one, David said, I have sinned against the Lord. Despite the fact that he was the king, despite the fact that he has right to tell them also to kill Nathan, and the whole thing will be covered because Nathan was the only man that knew because God revealed to him. Yet, David humbled himself and said, I have sinned. This is what we call sincere heart. God looked at him and said, This man is sincere. He is not sinless, but yet he is sincere in his heart. How sincere are you today? In your heart towards God because he knows your heart but God will not force you he will allow you to do according to what is in his word by coming to him and telling him how your heart is amen a heart that is not sincere is a heart that knows that what he or she is doing is not right with the word of God but continue to do it but in preference makes everybody to believe that everything is all right I was so disappointed this week. I was counseling a sister. And I was telling, asking her because he was asking me certain things and that he wanted to uh, go away from the church. And I said, why? He said, no, no, I just, everything is okay. I just, I just um, feel like uh, I've learned a lot here and my time is over. And I couldn't understand it. I said, what about the teaching? You like the teaching? You see, you have taught me a lot. And I've grown since I came to this place. And I said, what is the problem? You're not the pastor. I told my wife was surprised. But what happened after she left? I started to ask people that were around her. And I got to find out that even where she was, there were people she was not talking to. For years or for months. And this has caused now to her to become uncomfortable because you can't be living that kind of life and be comfortable under my teaching. It's not possible. It's not possible. You can't be living in sin and be comfortable. It's impossible. Now you want to sneak out. And I said, oh, I wish she understand the word of God. That no matter where you sneak into, whether you sneak into the pit, God sees your heart until that heart is changed. That's why you see people run around churches because they think that when they go to churches, different churches, they will be blessed. They think the blessing is in the church. They go, yes, the blessing is in the church where we go. But before that blessing gets to you, the state of your heart must be pure. The state of your heart must be clean according to the word of God. You must be sincere to God. You must be sincere to men of God around you because they are there to help you. Amen? Let's go further. You see, let's go to the book of Acts to show you that there are people in the church they know that what they are doing is right. It's wrong. But they consistently continue to move on thinking that nobody sees them. As far as nobody sees them, it's all right. But there is only one person that sees and when they start to reward, no one can stop it. As chapter 5, at the beginning of the church, look at what happened there from verse 1. Amen? But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the prize. His wife also would be privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why had certain fear in her heart? To lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep part of the price of the land. Why it remained was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not thy own power? 
Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And he has hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that have these things. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in, and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the lamb for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tell the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and gave up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead, and carried her, for buried her by her husband's side. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as had these things. I believe that that is what we will be seeing in churches.